Hello and welcome to part four of my dividing head series. In this part I am going to be machining the spindle itself. It is hewn out of this lump of one and a half inch mild steel and it is quite a simple part but it is critical. Parallelism and concentricity of this piece both internally and externally uh, along with the accuracy of the external diameter will separate a usable tool from scrap. The external diameter of the spindle is dimensioned at 1 and 1 16th nominal, but it needs to be made to fit the bore machined in the casting. Mine is 1.065. The internal bore is at 3 quarters of an inch, and this will be drilled, bored, and then reamed to final size. This bore will then be held on a mandrel to ensure the concentricity of all of the other features. The rest of the machining is quite straightforward. There is a 1 and 1 16th 24 TPI thread for a thrust nut. That will take up the play in the spindle from the back. That's followed by a 1 inch shoulder with a keyway to take the worm wheel. I have measured this wheel and the bore is indeed 1 inch. And finally this is all backed up with a second thrust nut, this time at 1 inch 24 TPI. Now there is a substantial amount of metal to remove from this, so let's make a start. I'm in the forge or chuck here, not because I need the accuracy, but because I need access to the end for facing and centre drilling. And this is the only chuck I have that has a hole in the body big enough for this material to fit into. And even then, I am right on the limits of the extension that I would normally like for a facing cut. But I think it'll be okay. Centering this is not critical, I just need it running reasonably true. That's within a thou and good enough. After taking a facing cut, I am centre drilling and then opening out the bore with increasing drill sizes. That is about as far as I can go from this side. There are still the remnants of the centre drill there that will be carried on the tailstock centre. So I think I can now extend this out of the chuck to give access to the full length for roughing down to size. The point of this operation is material removal. I am looking to get this to around 1 and 1 8 diameter to leave me as little as possible to remove once it's on the mandrel. I've marked the shoulder location there with a sharpie, again with some material for finishing passes. I'm using a high speed steel tool here as I can remove more material per pass with that than the carbide tooling I have and I'm starting off with a depth of cut of 20 thou. As long as there are no complaints from the lathe, I will increase that by 10 thou per pass just to remove the material as quickly as I can. This is the final pass. We are at 50 thou depth of cut, so 100 thou off diameter. That's about two and a half millimetres. Should have done that from the start. I have cut off the excess metal, flipped this around in the chuck and dialed it in for the start of the critical features. I have faced the end already and without removing the part from this setup, I need to machine the bore parallel and to size. These will be finished surfaces and completing them both at the same time will ensure that they are square to each other. They can then be used as references for the rest of the machining. The first step is to drill to meet the hole started on the other end, followed by a larger drill all the way through to remove the majority of the material. With that done, it is on to boring. This is the longest boring bar that I have, and it is barely long enough. It will need mounting at full extension from the tool post, and I'll be honest, I'm a little bit worried about it. I will try it, and if it doesn't work, we will have to make something, which is going to be tricky with this setup in the lathe. So we're set up and ready to go. Um, a full pass down this bore will bring the face of the work to within about a 30 second of the tool post. So I have a carriage stop set up there, and I will power feed close to that and then disengage and feed by hand up to it. I can't get any cutting oil into this bore, so I will just hit this with compressed air from time to time, just to keep things cool.
It seems my worries were unfounded, as that cut pretty well. I am increasing the feed rate a little, and I'm taking a tenth hour depth of cut per pass, with the occasional sprint pass. Progress is checked as always with a telescope engage, and I am aiming to get within about 10 thou of my three quarters. I'm where I want to be now, so I will switch out to the reamer and finish this off. You join me back at the bench, and it is underwhelming, to be honest. The surface finish from the boring bar was, frankly, spectacular. And after reaming, the best description for it is tolerable, which is a shame. We are exactly parallel to the extents of my measuring equipment, at four tenths over three quarters. So the part is good, it's just a little disappointing. Short of machining a new one, there is not a lot I can do about it, so we will carry on and complete the remaining features. They will be added to this on a mandrel, which needs making. It will be a parallel mandrel with the spindle held onto it with a nut and washer. So let's head on over to the lathe and get that completed. Here is the mandrel virtually complete. It is a very straightforward piece of between centres turning. It is parallel along its length with a taper there at the left side. The only thing that can cause issues is the tail stuck alignment, which often needs tweaking on this lathe to get it turning parallel. Once it is though, it is simply a case of hitting dimension. I have checked the spindle on this and it does fit nicely. I have marked there where the back side of the spindle finishes. So all I need to do now is to turn down the end just past that scribe line and thread for a retaining nut. The spindle is now mounted on the mandrel. I have taken a couple of test cuts just to check that we are still turning parallel, which we are. So it is now time to take it down to dimension. This needs to be a close-ish running fit in the casting. The collar width is not critical and is brought in by increasing cut using the top slide while the carriage is hard up against the bed stop. Cut is then put on using the cross slide and I'm again using power feed close to the carriage stop and then feeding by hand up to it. Dimensions are frequently checked along the length to ensure the part remains parallel. And we are eventually at dimension. I am at one thou smaller than the bore, which should give me a nice fit. I'm not going to take this out just yet. I trust the numbers and I will give it a trial fit once I have screw cut the threads. Before I can do that, I need to turn down the end to one inch and I have set a carriage top again to set the limit of this feature. So the way this is going to work is we have around two and three quarter inches of this spindle inside the casting. There will then be threads here on the one and one sixteenth section to take a nut, which will be made out of a blank like this. The gear then rides on the one inch section. And finally, there will be a second nut at the end here, which will clamp the gear, which will also be retained with a key. So there is a plain section here and a threaded section here and here. So I just need to cut some relief around here and here for those threads to run into. That's done, so it's on to the screw cutting. 
If at all possible, I choose thread pitches that are multiples of eight, as this allows me to ignore the thread dial and engage the half nuts at any point I choose. Those threads are complete, so I will just take off any sharp corners, take a skim pass off the collar here, and add chamfers. Okay, I'm happy enough now to take this out, and let's see if it fits. Here we are with the machine spindle. The threads look pretty good. I have obviously already tried this in the bore, and it is a good fit. It slides in easily and I can't detect any trace at all of movement in the spindle radially. And it is also a nice running fit. Once I have this fully assembled, I will check to see what runout we have with an indicator. But for now, it looks all right. The gear is a good fit on the parallel portion there. So all that's remaining is the nuts. At the lathe and the blanks have been rough sawn to size. A facing cut on both sides brings them parallel. They can then be measured, returned to the lathe and brought to dimension. They are then centre drilled, opened out and then bored to size. Again, I'm using a carriage stop to ensure I don't run into the chuck jaws. When boring for internal threads, I'm usually aiming for around 65% thread engagement. I have reached final size, so I will make a note of the dials so that I can return the boring bar to this position later, and I will switch out to an internal threading tool. I will also need to reset the carriage stop there, as this is a shorter tool. Again, this is 24 TPI thread, so no threading dial to worry about. Simply touch off and cut to depth. That should be the final pass, so it's time for a test fit. Right, as you can see, the spindle bottoms out on the chuck jaws before I get to the thread I am trying to match. A smarter man would have made the nuts first and then hung them on the tailstock when cutting the threads on the spindle. I am just going to have to trust my numbers. I will take a final spring pass and then clean up the crests by returning the boring bar to its previous setting and just running it through. Finally in this setup, the nuts get a small relief to allow clearance for the key that will locate the gear. As you can see, the nuts do fit the spindle, which is lucky, and the whole assembly is returned to the mandrel to finish the external surfaces of the nuts. I have lengths of tube here acting as spacers to keep everything aligned, and once these are to size, a couple of generous chamfers complete the turning operations. So it's over to the mill. Only a couple of features left to complete today. The nuts need a cross hole drilling and tapping for a grub screw. These will lock the end play adjustment once it's been set and the screws will be backed up by copper pads to prevent damaging those threads. And finally, the spindle needs a keyway. The key is supplied as four millimeter keystock. Now I don't have a four millimeter cutter, so I'm going to have to open out this slot with a one eighth slot drill until I get a nice fit. That's done and I'm happy with the fit, so let's head on back to the bench. Here we are ready for assembly. Off camera I have made and annealed these little copper pads. They will go under the grub screws here and there to protect the threads on the spindle. I won't be locking these nuts in place until the whole project is finished, so I'm just going to leave them out for now. Let's see how this looks. This first nut is to set the end float of the spindle. That's followed by the key, the gear, and then the final nut locks it all down. Well, apart from the finish in that spindle, I'm pretty pleased with today's work. It is starting to come together and is beginning to look a little bit like a dividing head. Next time I'll be machining the plunger assembly and the associated bracketry, which will be used for direct indexing. So please look out for that if you are interested. 
Again, do leave any thoughts in the comments. If you do want to see more like this, please do subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you again. Cheerio.